the gospel and this feast of the sacred heart of Jesus details for us the last moments of Jesus until he was taken down from the cross. They have pierced his side, but before that, they had pierced his hands and his feet. The Gospels are quiet about how Jesus was dressed at the crucifixion. None of the evangelists give a detail how he was dressed at the crucifixion. But if you look at images and sculptures and artistic works of how Jesus was dressed at the time of the crucifixion, there can be only one word for how they dressed up Jesus at the crucifixion. What are those words? Swaddling clothes. Swaddling clothes. The robe they had given up to one another in a lottery. He was left with swaddling clothes. Let us journey 33 years later when he was born. Did not the evangelist say that the infant born of Mary was wrapped in swaddling clothes? What is the significance of swaddling clothes? I'll give you a little background. The sheep and the lamb were offered in the temple as sacrifice for sins. But the lamb to be offered must be unblemished. No wounds, no spots, clean. Because the lamb will be offered to the Lord. So when a lamb is born, there are Levitical shepherds who are on the watch. And if a lamb is born, that is perfect and without spot, then the Levitical priests separate that lamb from the other lambs and then wrap that lamb with swaddling clothes. Swaddling clothes are not used to wrap babies. Swaddling clothes are only used to wrap the lamb that is chosen from birth to become the sacrificial lamb in the temple at the proper time. Sometimes we miss that in the Christmas story. We think that the swaddling lamb is a cute, the swaddling clothes is a cute description. No, it is not a cute description. It is a frightening description. Because the evangelist says that this baby born was dressed like a lamb to be brought to the slaughter in due time. Swaddling clothes refers to the lamb. And the swaddling clothes that the baby wore when he was born are now the swaddling clothes that the Lamb of God crucified on the cross now wears. Swaddling clothes. And what does it say to us about what we celebrate today? International Day for the benefactors of the Papal Foundation Aid to the Church in Need. What is it saying to us? Who is the topmost benefactor of the aid to the church in need? Christ. Who is the number one benefactor of the papal foundation that supports persecuted Christians? Christ. Christ on the cross, wrapped with swaddling clothes, is the top benefactor of the papal foundation aid to the church in need. But what kind of benefactor is Christ? Did he write a check? Did he build an orphanage? Did he build a hospital? Did he even build a small chapel? 
Did he build a sanctuary, an altar, a shrine? Did he put up a scholarship foundation? None of these. What did Christ do to merit the title, the number one benefactor of persecuted Christians? He gave us God. And giving God, he did not leave anything for himself. In other words, brothers and sisters, the best benefactor is not the one who gives the highest. The best benefactor is the one who keeps nothing for himself anymore. The best benefactor is not measured by what is donated. The best benefactor is measured by what is retained. The best benefactor is not measured by how much is donated. The best benefactor is measured by how much do you keep for yourself. And Christ the benefactor left nothing for himself. In fact, he had no power with his hands. He could not even walk. He had no power with his feet. His heart was pierced and then he was only left not with robes anymore but with swaddling clothes worthy of a lamb. That is the core of it all. Let us not measure sponsorship. Let us not classify donors as highest because they give the best. Because the best benefactor is the one who keeps nothing for himself. And in the words of St. Paul, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. We thank the benefactors of the aid to the church in need. And who are those benefactors? Yes, we include the donors, those who give. But we also include those who are not able to give from their pockets, but they give from their sacrifice. They give from their loneliness. They give from their sadness. They, keep, they give from their sick beds. They give their time. They give their lives. Actually, my dear brothers and sisters, after Christ, the benefactors of this papal foundation are the persecuted Christians themselves.